Over the past couple of years, if you have been following the trends of the Linux desktop, you might know of the big migration of desktop environments transitioning to Wayland. But what even is Wayland? Like its predecessor X11, it's a display protocol that allows a graphical application like a web browser or a game to talk to a compositor, window manager and all the tools required to produce a proper output. But while it's much more modern than X11, many still notice a bunch of issues. And with more and more desktop environments switching to Wayland, one must ask the question. Is Linux really ready to move away from X11 entirely yet? This video has been requested and made possible by channel members of our community. If you want to share your own video ideas, see what's going on behind the scenes and become a valued member of our community, then please make sure to check out the join button or link in the video description below. The transition to the Wayland Display Protocol isn't something new and actually has started many years ago already. It's just now that we are seeing the benefits that it has over the old X11 protocol, since not only does the protocol itself need to support certain implementations, the desktop environments and someone working with Wayland needs to adapt and implement them properly to make it work. Before we get into on what I actually mean with implementations, let's talk about why the change to Wayland has almost become necessary. Up until recently, Linux desktops have been relying on so-called Xorg servers, with some additions like compositors to allow for smooth animations, effects and other tools to just make them a bit nicer. The problem is that those Xorg servers, and especially the X11 protocol itself, were not really designed to operate at the level that we see today, so many extensions and alterations were made, making it very complex and bloated, in a sense that many unused features remain or have dependencies which can make the implementation of new features much harder. Given the age of the X11 protocol, the age of the initial X or server implementations and all the stuff that has been added since, it became harder and harder to fulfill the changing needs of users. For example, did you know that X11 actually doesn't really support multiple monitors as they are just getting merged into one big one? This leads to problems with variable refresh rates, scaling and latency issues of only one screen being the reference and missing HDR support altogether. But wait a minute, what if you use a Linux distro like Linux Mint that still uses the X11 protocol by default? How come that you maybe didn't even experience any of those issues despite running multiple monitors? Well, there are some workarounds in place that can solve the design flaws of the protocol and the server and adapt it to more modern requirements. However, some changes like implementing HDR support for example would require a lot of rework of an essentially frozen part of the protocol which was never designed to handle modern GPU pipelines like Wayland can. In terms of a typical desktop experience without all of these fancy features and especially on single monitor setups, it still holds up and is pretty much indistinguishable from Wayland for an end user. But without a full redesign, it probably won't ever reach the capabilities that Wayland is already offering. However, Wayland has its own problems of course. One of the biggest ones is time. Wayland development is at an all time high and new protocols, APIs and general optimizations get added all the time. However, like mentioned earlier, someone needs to implement them. Many users complain about problems with screen sharing, higher perceived latencies when gaming, incompatibilities with some programs, not being able to remap their keys, Wayland not remembering the position and size of programs when opening them, unsharp text in some programs and of course the Nvidia problems with increased stutter, stability issues and lack of some features like G-Sync and managing power limits. Wayland not only functions differently but is also more secure by design. On X11, a program could essentially get access to almost everything on your system that utilizes it. You could get the position of windows and remember them. You could easily remap keys globally because every program can see it. A bit simplified, but still, from a security side of things this is a nightmare and it's why on Wayland essentially no application is allowed to see the other without having to ask first. When screen sharing with Pipewire, you get a prompt. In the background, apps need to use so-called portals to talk to each other. And while Wayland already supports many portals for screencasting, remote desktop, file choosers, the ability to open the correct app when opening files or links, notifications and much much more, someone needs to implement them in both the desktop environment and the application. And this just takes time. But here's the thing, even though many refuse to hear it, many of the previously mentioned problems don't really apply for most. 
If your desktop environment is GNOME, KDE Plasma or a Tiling Window Manager that ships Wayland by default, you essentially get everything you need to run your desktop apps. To play video games, consume video content with increasingly better HDR support, you can access your desktop remotely, record and share your screen applications, even in Discord nowadays, and generally just have a solid experience. Are there any flaws that X11 doesn't have? Sure. One example would be the NVIDIA problem of missing features, the window restoration if something goes wrong and crashes, and of course the support for many applications that just don't and may never provide native Wayland support. Some of them might not even run with the compatibility tool X Wayland, but those applications are not used as often as you might think. And X Wayland is actually pretty solid. Basically all games that are being run through Proton or the one compatibility layer still use it, and it works well. Nowadays even the scaling issues have been mostly resolved, though there are still some remaining, especially when changing the scaling factor during your session. Is Wayland faster than X11? Well, theoretically yes, but only if all applications support it properly. But that is simply not the case and for some never will be. Wayland is not a drop in replacement for X11 and just works completely differently. This is why the experimental Wayland sessions in Linux Mint, XFCE and other transitioning desktop environments is so much worse. Everything from the compositor to core applications needs to be reworked. And this can take years depending on the scope, the number of developers working on it and how well the rest of the desktop environment is already Wayland ready. Things like window frameworks for example. So it's not like Wayland is not ready to replace X11 on the Linux desktop, as GNOME and KDE Plasma are proof that running a Wayland exclusive session is indeed possible and performing really well. It's just that there are still these compatibility issues with some drivers or applications that either refuse to implement changes in a certain way, which like others show is possible or are just abandoned or deeply integrated into the Xorg environment, so that a complete rewrite would be necessary. But here's the good news. For a while, X11 won't really go anywhere because it's still being used in many popular Linux desktop environments. If the transition to Wayland has been completed by them as well, and there are still some programs that won't work, the new compatible ones that are built with Wayland in mind will emerge. My personal take on this is that transitioning to Wayland, or as a matter of fact just away from X11 in general, is a very good idea. And support on desktop environments that already embrace it has been good so far. In fact, I have been using it for more than two years by now without any major issues. Sure, not everyone had the same experience, but over time most of the issues have already been addressed and many applications have also been updated to support them. I truly think that Wayland, as in the protocol itself, is ready to be used by most desktop environments and most users will appreciate the advanced features it has. However, the different and sometimes more complex way to implement things and the effort it takes to transition everything over to Wayland will just take time as it isn't a drop in replacement. So is Wayland ready to replace X11 on the Linux desktop? In all truth, it just depends on what you need and if your application supports it. The protocol itself is ready for most users, but the implementation of some desktop environments just aren't there yet, but that's not a problem right now. It's a process, a transition and not just a one day cutover and suddenly now we're all using Wayland. And that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think of Wayland? Do you think that GNOME and KDE Plasma are pushing it too hard? What are some of the issues that you experienced with it personally? Please let us know in the comment section down below. Before I end this video, I quickly want to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you had a blast and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.